what I call them. The Twin Towers of Faith. Now, here's something that I didn't talk about last week, and I beat myself up about it because it was kind of important. The towers, let's talk about the Twin Towers that were in New York. They were important to one another because without one, the other one was not as structurally sound. They were meant to be a pair. Mm -hmm. That's why when they knocked one down, the other one went down. Mm -hmm. Because it did not have its support of its sister. Their foundations were one and the same. Okay? So, if we're going to have twin towers of faith and they are submission and resistance, then that means that we have to what? Have both of them to have a foundation. Uh -huh. yes. That means we can't just submit to God and everything will be alright. Mm -hmm. It means we have to resist the devil. That means when our friends call us on Friday night and say, hey, you want to go to the club? Let's go get drunk. Let's go get high. Or if somebody calls you, if you're in a committed relationship, this would be a, a thing. Somebody calls you and says, hey, want to come over? I'm going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Well, you have two choices in that situation. Resist or cave. Mm -hmm. But you could say, but pastor, I, I submit to God. But without resisting the enemy, your submission to God is null and void. Because mm -hmm. it ain't going to do you no good. Mm -hmm. We have to resist, which, what did I say it meant last week? To oppose actively and with force. We can't just say, oh, I resist the devil. We have to do this with force. Mm -hmm. Let me just say, if somebody tried to take something from you, a purse, a wallet, a watch, money, you would resist that with force. Mm -hmm. Maybe up until the point where a gun came out. And if you're me, you probably still would do it because I'm just crazy. Or you start speaking in tongues at them and they just think you're nuts and they'll leave you alone. But if somebody tried to steal something from you, you're going to protect that. You're going to resist what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the enemy, guess what? He's trying to take something from you. Yeah. He's trying to take your life. Yeah. But you don't see it because he paints the picture so pretty. Mm -hmm. Nothing he has to offer is really what it seems to be. Nothing. Well, Pastor, I can just take a pill and everything will be better. True. I have experience with that. I know that to be a fact. For a minute. For an hour. For a couple hours. Some of them, 12 hours. But guess what? After the pill wears off, guess what's still there? Mm -hmm. The reason you took the pill. Mm -hmm. And what could be there is... It's worse because now your family and friends are upset with you because you took the pill. Yes. Or you took ten pills or whatever you did. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just going to have one beer. Those are famous last words. Yes. Because one is never enough. Mm -hmm. And a thousand is too many. Yes. Call it like it is. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong to drink. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. The Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. Uh -huh. yes. I'm not going to be the judge or the jury. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you this, the Bible also says not to be drunk. Mm -hmm. How many of you have enough self-control to just have one drink? If you do, that's great. I don't really like to drink, but when I did, I could not stop with one drink. Because mm -hmm. you know what happens, you start to what? Feel good. Mm -hmm. Well, and then you get to that fine line where... If one more, you know you're going to be sick later. But you just got to have it. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the night's flowing, the music's pumping, the boys are there, the girls are there. Come on. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to a room full of innocent folks. Mm -hmm. I know this. So we have that one more drink, and then we pay for it for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. After you get a certain age, you pay for it for a longer time. Mm -hmm. And that just gets longer with every year that passes. Mm -hmm. So it's not worth it to me because right now at my age it's a four day commitment mm -hmm. that I don't have. Mm -hmm. So it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And I think God drinking was never my thing because when you have an addictive personality it could easily turn into being an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And it runs in my family. And that is the hardest drug to come off of. Mm -hmm. Be honest with you. Withdrawal from alcohol can kill you. Mm -hmm. You can't. Without God's help you can't just do it on your own. Mm -hmm. And I say that because my father quit alcohol cold turkey after drinking for 70 years. Mm -hmm. Never picked it back up. Never got sick, never a day. But God had to do that for him. Mm -hmm. Because God had to show him how real he was. Mm -hmm. And that was one area he could demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Does that happen for everybody? No. 
I'm a testament to that. It does not happen for everybody. But does that mean that God isn't working? No. One day at a time for everything that goes on in your life. And I'm going to tell you a secret. If one day at a time is too big, go one hour at a time. Mm -hmm. And if that seems just too much, go one minute at a time. Mm -hmm. And if you can't bear that, go one second at a time. We do not win battles. Now hear this. You win a war by what? Winning battles. Mm -hmm. A war is not something that just goes out and they have one big fight and it's over. Mm -hmm. War is a series of battles. Mm -hmm. So if we ever intend on winning the war, we're going to have to start fighting the battles. Yes. yes. No matter how small or how big they are. Mm -hmm. We don't get to pick what the devil does to us. Yes. Wouldn't that be great? Because mm -hmm. he could just come at me with women all day long. And that would be <laughs> no consequence. <laughs> that would be great. That's what I would pick. You know, bring all the women you want. No big deal. But we don't get that choice. He hits us in our weak spots. So here's what I'm going to suggest. For us to submit to God, here's what I think we need to do. I think we need to be honest with God. He already knows. But here's the deal with God. He's kind of strange in one way, a lot of ways, but uh, this way in particular. He likes to hear it from you. And I found this. How many of you that pray to God and actually have a relationship with him know this to be true? God will ask you questions to which he already knows the answer. For example, he started way back long ago with Adam. He called out to the garden, Adam, where are you? Do you not think that he did not know where Adam was and what Adam had done? Mm -hmm. He wanted to see how open and forthcoming we would be. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to start pouring our heart out to God and say, God, you know what? I have a weak spot. God, those go-go boys, just, I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't go where they are, and that'll be one way to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Uh, don't go to certain websites. That'll make it a little bit easier on yourself. Yes. Am I talking to nobody? <laughs> I don't have problems with go-go boys. <laughs> All right. Go-go girls? <laughs> Whatever you call them. I don't know what you call the girls. Um, so, or how many of you have ever had an issue with online stuff? We'll just... I'll make it bold or, or broad. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You've had issues with online stuff. I have. Mm -hmm. It's too tempting. Yes. So what do you do about it? Well, most of us, what do we do when we have a flaw? We like to what? Hide it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want anybody to know that there's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you a secret. Everybody has something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Cats out of the better now. <laughs> Everybody has something wrong with them. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter how close to God you get. Mm -hmm. And here's how I can prove it to you. Every perfect person in the Bible, God took out of the world. Mm -hmm. Up to and including Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, if you were perfect, I don't think you'd be here. And I don't see any chariots of fire or whirlwinds coming <laughs> for you. <laughs> so, I'm going to submit to you, nobody in this room is perfect. Mm -hmm. So we got here to our our second part. And here we go, Tower Two. We cover Tower One, which is submission. <coughs> now we talk about Tower Two, which is what? Resistance. resistance. Alright, Tower Two resistance. What did I say that means? I want you to just know that one line. To oppose actively and with force. More so than with force. Because mm -hmm. you can oppose something and be passive about it. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of those friends or friends that are passively opposing me. <laughs> which means this. They talk about me behind my back mm -hmm. and send me nice messages. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But let me tell you another secret. Uh, if you don't know your Bible that well, this might be helpful to you. The Bible says clearly, touch not my anointed mm -hmm. and do the prophets no harm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Everyone who's saved is anointed. Mm -hmm. Some of us more than others, as we have gifts and talents that God mm -hmm. gives us more. He said, I give my spirit out accordingly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I'm better or you're better. It just means that's what we do. Mm -hmm. So if you're anointed or you're a prophet, which that covers everybody mm -hmm. at some level, guess what? If somebody's doing that to you, you don't have to worry about taking care of it. Yes. Uh -huh. God will settle the score. Yes. I've had to go back and pray for my enemies 
so that God would have mercy on them because he came down on them so hard for what they did to me. Uh -huh. So hard that I had to say, Lord, please have mercy on them. Yes. Yes. Now, you know it had to be bad when you felt sorry for your enemy. Uh -huh. But God is a just God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he loves us. Uh -huh. How many of you, all right, you two love each other. Mm -hmm. If somebody were to hurt her, you're going to be upset. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do something about mm -hmm. it. And they're going to know you did something about it. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. God's the same way. Mm -hmm. See, folks don't understand this about him. Jesus is the kind one. The Savior. The, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, he's the, he's the good cop. Mm -hmm. But Daddy is not. Mm -hmm. Daddy would slay you dead just as soon to look at you. Mm -hmm. Because he's just. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's very black and white. Yes. It's right or it's wrong, and there's no there's no difference. Yes. Uh -huh. If you steal a piece of chewing gum or you shoot somebody dead, mm -hmm. yes. in his eyes, it's the same. Yes. And people don't agree with that, but mm -hmm. it's the truth. Yes. Yes. I didn't write this book. I just follow it. Uh -huh. Do I agree with everything that's in it? No, but I have to live by it. Uh -huh. That's submission. Yes. When I don't agree, but I still have to, it's mm -hmm. submission. But then when you resist, and this is so that we can get complete faith and victory in the Lord. And through the Lord, we must understand that what we are resisting. I mean, you can't resist something unless you know what it is. Mm -hmm. We must know the war and with whom we are at war with. It is not by might, nor by power, yes. but by my spirit, saith the Lord. How can you resist if you don't know the tower and its three critical sections? Tower has three sections mm -hmm. as they build it. Mm -hmm. Has a basement, a foundation. Which I found funny because God said what? I knew you from what? The foundations mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep that in your pipe. So the foundation that I think for resistance is a boldly confident spirit. Because weak and quiet folks do not conquer anything. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you have to be like me, and loud, and obnoxious? No. But in your spirit, be bold. Mm -hmm. When the devil comes against you, be bold. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing that can kill faith and victory, and that is fear. Mm -hmm. When you're scared of the devil, that fuels him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me just give you this little piece. I wrote something this week uh, that I'll share with you a, a little bit later in a few weeks from now, or a month or so from now, because it's just not time yet. But when he exists, when you, when you only exist, he can live. When you live, he can only exist. Mm -hmm. Think about it. it. Took me a minute when it came to me. I was like, but it makes sense. If you remember in Tower One, we had to submit to God to have a humble spirit. Mm -hmm. Oops, nobody likes to do that. But in Psalms chapter 27, verse 2, we're reminded that in the face of our adversaries, we're to be bold and that they will tremble because God will put us into a secret temple. That's verse 5. And there we will praise him while our enemies are destroyed. Mm -hmm. So God's going to put us in a secret place. We're going to praise him mm -hmm. while he fights the battle. Yes. How much easier can it get? <laughs> And all you have to do is what? Resist. Yes. And that's an action that can be done within yourself. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be audible. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be known by anyone that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. It can just happen in your spirit. Mm -hmm. When the devil comes against you, we have two things. When they called and said, Mama had another stroke, I had two options. Get fearful or let my bold and confident spirit rise up and say, You know what, devil? No. No. Mm -hmm. Do not take one more step towards my mm home. -hmm. And we have to be that way. Mm -hmm. Or we're not resisting. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So in Tower 2, a firm foundation is to be bold in our approach to resisting the devil and to be humble in our submission to ascertain victory. Uh oh. 